very good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the last six years um, of my life and how it happened that I came to India. So first of all, I want to show you a small video that shows the environment in which I spent the last six years of my life. So now the question arises, why? <laughs> why did I live uh, my job, my family, uh, a good life in the capital of Germany, Berlin, uh, to live in a tiny little remote village in Rajasthan uh, to coach and teach the children of the village? I was always very adventurous. I love to travel. And I come from a very sports-related family. My grandfather, my grandmother, my uncle, my auntie, my mother, my father, my whole family was engaged in the local sports club. We all grew up in uh, volunteering in the sports club, in coaching and playing different uh, kind of sports. And so it was in my blood and I am what I am today because of sports. Um, I started my own travel agency uh, so that I could travel all the time. And uh, one of my favorite destinations was India. I was always uh, traveling around looking for new places where I could bring my clients off the beaten tracks to show them the real country. My business partner came from Jaipur and his mother came from a little village which was halfway between Agra and Jaipur. So we thought it would be a good idea to bring our clients for a lunch break to a little Indian village, show them the real village life, traditional life, colorful life and uh, host them for a lunch break, uh, maybe the kids of the village could show their village and uh, the local family could have some extra income. So the family lived in this uh, ruined fort. They were the uh, former rulers, the Rajputs of the village. And uh, I started dreaming of uh, maybe I could teach them some hockey, the village kids, they have nothing to do. And uh, maybe we could have some space in front of the fort where we could start coaching. So I shared my dream with the local family and they were saying, yeah, you can have the space in front of our fort. We don't uh, use that and uh, you can try. So in 2010, I was hosting a veterans hockey team from Vienna, from Austria. And we brought some hockey sticks and we had a training session with the kids. And um, so the kids were so excited and then I started dreaming that Yo, this would be a great story if I, if I could make a difference in that village. So obviously my business was still in Germany and uh, I could only coach them once in a while when I was in India, otherwise uh, nothing much happened in the village. So I tried to hire volunteers from Germany who could bridge the gap uh, when I was not here, but that somehow didn't work out. 
Then I thought, okay, uh, maybe I could run my travel business online and uh, I could sit in that village. Maybe I would have less clients than before, but I would need not so much money to survive here. And I could coach and teach the kids. So I gave everything up in Germany. I sold everything. I closed my office and I reconstructed uh, two rooms in that old fort. And uh, I called a roller and a tractor and we leveled the ground here in front of uh, the fort and we called the kids for practice. I went to the local schools and I wanted to especially encourage the girls to play hockey with me. And uh, I brought sticks and I coached them for a training session and I invited them to come in the afternoon after school uh, to our hockey ground and I also tried to offer them English classes because I didn't speak any Hindi, they didn't speak any English so the mode of communication was very basic. There was an old temple and uh, the family provided me one room which we used as an open air classroom and I started uh, giving English classes where some of the kids would show up in the afternoons but I realized that you know that uh, traditional Indian schooling system where kids happily repeat what you tell them but their brains are not working anyhow that doesn't work much and they don't learn anything so we started uh, speaking on the hockey ground so actually all the kids learned speaking English while playing this was our village hockey ground. We made a boundary wall around and it was very dusty, um, especially during the hot summers. It was almost unbearable, but the kids would show up every day and they didn't mind. And uh, so we had a kind of time sharing agreement with the local cows, which would rest on that place <laughs> while we were not playing. And um, so the kids always tried to sneak in late because the first one who came had to remove the remainings of the cows. And um, so yeah, um, we had so many kids that I could not uh, make, uh, like get hold of them and uh, they were very wild. So I started uh, learning the colors in Hindi and I bought t-shirts in different colors so that I could say the uh, Pila group is there, the Lal is there and Safet is over there. And I got some older um, students of the village who helped me in coaching in the beginning. So I, try to make them understand and also for me uh, don't dream your life live your dream so then after one year um, practicing uh, i showed them the movie chakti india they got very fascinated that was a funny story because um, i bought an old screen and a beamer and i invited the kids to watch with me the movie and you know we, bought the, we brought the cables out of the Ford and there were some cu power cuts obviously also and uh, we had to uh, show the movie when the sun was almost going down so that we can see the movie and we put some chairs up and kids were sitting on the ground and I was fascinated watching the movie and I was so excited about my idea and after half an hour I looked around and only the farmers were sitting around me because the kids already went home because when it's, when it's getting dark they all have to go home. So yeah, so they only saw half of the movie, nevertheless they got very much inspired and they said Andrea we also want to play. So my friend he was the hockey coach in the DPS uh, school in Jaipur and they invited us for our first match. So we went by train to Jaipur which was already the first uh, big excitement and I, w I feel so privileged that I could share all these first moments with the kids you know they saw the big city they asked me Andrea how to go upper like how how they can go up these huge buildings and uh, how this all this traffic works and uh, the first time in their life they were wearing sport shoes sheen pads socks so uh, Chandu my local partner and I we were sitting next to each other one was putting up the socks one was putting inside the sheen pads and then we sent them on the ground and the, the whole stadium was full with uh, privileged children in white uh, school uniforms the green grass was wow they've never seen in such a grass in their life and uh, we realized that uh, you know we were quite malnutrition compared to the <laughs> city children which were according to the coach the same age group which I don't agree but yes this was the next lesson that we had had to learn life is not fair especially uh, when it comes to sports and competition I had to learn my lesson the hard way in India if it's under 14 
it's maybe under 70. <laughs> so then I thought, uh, my project needs more awareness. I need to raise funds, so how I'm gonna do this? So I have to room around the country. So I bought a rickshaw. And I drove from Jaipur to Chennai. Wow. 2,400 kilometers in 13 days. And I can tell you it was the best way to know the country. Every 100 kilometers, different daba, different food. Um, the people were so friendly and welcoming. I had, to, I had to drink chai with each and everybody. Everybody wanted to know, like, what the hell is that white woman doing in that rickshaw? And we had a two meter hockey stick uh, on the roof. Um, so uh, we, we promoted, I mean, we didn't raise any funds, to be honest. But it was a great experience, and we were in some newspaper highlighted, and uh, you know there was some awareness of the project at least. And it was a great experience um, to drive all along the country. Yeah, so it, I, I try to encourage the kids that you have to sit in the driver's seat of your car, of your life. Uh, in villages, they are only driven by the village society, by their parents. They do what, they, what the parents want, and uh, uh, later on, they do a job which uh, they don't want, but the parents want, or the neighbors want, or the whoever wants, but not them. So sports teaches you to be self-confident, to understand what you want in your life. So then obviously the girls also wanted to play. And uh, my focus was anyway on the girls. Uh, the problem was just that their school uniforms, the skirts were quite long, so it was very difficult to run. And uh, a regular hockey skirt would be very brave for a village girl to wear. That was too short. So then my fashion design uh, diploma came into uh, accounts. So I got a, a tailoring machine and I tailored hockey skirts which were a little longer than uh, the regular hockey skirts, and uh, the girls loved them. And uh, I always had my silver suitcase where I put all the socks, shin pads, uh, shirts, and uh, skirts, and we would travel with the train. Uh, this time we went to Haryana, and the girls had their first match. But uh, <clears throat> that was, again, a, a very enthusiastic from my end, because it was, I think it was, April, May, it was like 40, 45 degrees, it was burning hot, and we had to wait for the Mukke Aditi. <laughs> Which is more important the longer you have to wait. So the first children already fainted because of the heat, and uh, we finally had then our match, and um, this is uh, my daughter Kavita, so I, I took care of her. She didn't have a mother, and I brought her the best Puma shoes from Germany, and she said, Andrea, too tight. She wanted to play bare feet. She was the wild jungle kid. She wanted uh, to play bare feet as per her convenience and not with my good uh, sport shoes that I brought for her. Then uh, we played our first All India KD Singh Babu Under 14 tournament, which is, by the way, the only Under 14 tournament where really Under 14 uh, teams are playing <laughs> in Lucknow. And they had a really, really good sports canteen. So in Rajasthan, most of the families are vegetarians. And it's even you are a bad person if you are a non vegetarian. So I'm from Germany, I am a non vegetarian. So that was always some blame to put on me, or a bad influence that I have on the children because I'm eating non-veg. So this is Lokesh. He was our goalkeeper. He was the smallest of all. And he saw all the other teams eating uh, eggs for breakfast and butter and everything. And he was asking me, Andrea, if I eat eggs, I get strong? Said, you can try. So he, was, he went to the buffet, he got one egg, the whole team was watching him. He survived the egg. And uh, all, all the others, one by one, also took one egg. By the end of the tournament, everybody had four eggs for breakfast. <laughs> and since that time, it was always our secret. If we went out for tournaments together, the first question was, Andrea, we eat omelette? <laughs> So they knew that this is something good, but they are not allowed to eat this at home. And somebody was even asking me if his mother can smell that he eat eggs. <laughs> they were literally scared. So 
we always extended, most of the time we, we were out in the first round on tournaments because we were the youngest. Um, but to get more experience, I always ask the organizer if we can stay some two, three days longer. First of all, you travel all the way for one match. And then the food is so good and they don't get that kind of food at home. Plus, if they watch matches, they also can learn a lot. So we always extended our stay and we had lovely food everywhere. This was the Nero Cup in uh, Delhi, where they, together with all the state teams, were doing the march pass. And you can see here our hand-painted flag. And the kids were thrilled. They uh, floodlight, Mukha Aditi, <laughs> AstroTurf, AstroTurf in Delhi. Wonderful. Yeah, so if you have a dream, sky is the limit. Then uh, the next uh, crazy thing I did was I imported a second-hand AstroTurf from Germany. And uh, it was quite a, an action because it was the first second-hand AstroTurf that came to India and nobody at the customs knew how to handle that, how to evaluate a second-hand AstroTurf from Germany and how much tax I have to pay. So after I overcame this, the huge truck with the AstroTurf came from Gujarat port to Rajasthan, and we had a huge party, and I thought like, wow, my dream is coming true. We have an AstroTurf. I made it happen in Rajasthan. There are only two AstroTurfs, and I have number three. And I can make this happen for these children. And we had a huge party, and it was nice and great. And the next morning, 8 o'clock, Sarati, one of my girls, called me and she said, Andrea, please you come to the ground. Police is there. There is a problem. Okay. So we went to the ground. The ground work was already going on. It was a government project. <coughs> and uh, the sports ministry sanctioned money. Everything was nice. Huge stones blocked the entrance. The Sarpanch was sitting there on a plastic chair. And around 300 villagers were uh, singing freedom fighter songs. <laughs> I'm great she go home. Today she's ruling the hockey ground. Tomorrow she's ruling India. We don't want history to repeat itself. <laughs> I thought like, are they, are they talking about me? What, what does that mean? <laughs> ruling the hockey ground? I sign that this asset of will be government property and I donate this to the community. All I want is that these kids can play on an asset of. So I had to load my AstroTurf again, rescue it to another place, and store it somewhere. So the dream of the AstroTurf was on hold. Then I thought, OK, if my kids cannot play in Rajasthan on an AstroTurf, I bring them to Germany. So I took five boys for two months in the summer holidays to Germany, where they stayed in German families for two months. Had lovely German food, and uh, played in a German club. And surprisingly, they could compete with the kids of their age group. And they got so much exposure and so much learning for their future life that nobody can ever do for them in their life again. So they came back, and uh, everybody was thinking that maybe, maybe they don't want to go back. But they were so bonded with their families and they so, were so proud to tell all their stories and bring all the chocolates home and you know, benefit from their experience and tell everybody and uh, motivate all the other kids so that there was a big battle for the next year that who would be the privileged ones who could come with me to Germany. So since that time, every year, we select some children, the best ones who are present in practice, good in studies, good in hockey, and good attitude, good discipline, and we take them to Germany. And we find a lot of sponsors in Germany who support these hockey clubs, who host them, and who find this a very great idea to integrate them in their teams. So Deepak, my so-called son, he was the lucky one. He even went with me to Switzerland. And he was so amazed that these cows give 40 liters milk <laughs> while his Buffalo at home gives maximum one liter, which is enough for a cup of chai for his grandfather. Then um, 
I thought, okay, sports is good, but I should involve myself more in education because that is what counts at the end. And um, out of that old temple, we made a school. So I had German volunteers with me and with our own hands, we knocked down walls and ceilings and the whole village was standing outside watching us how these white people can do this labor work, which is actually the lowest level of work that you can do. And we were working hand in hand with the local laborers who earned like 250 rupees uh, a day. And we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun to build a school with our own hands. And uh, we started the first English medium school with uh, our little ones. So I want to show you a small video from our school, how we tried to teach the village kids in a state-of-the-art way. Yeah, so our school was a, a primary school, English medium, LKG, UKG, and class one, two, three, and four. Unfortunately, uh, we also had to shut down uh, that school um, April this year because uh, our local partner misused foundation money and uh, we bought land to lay out that astroturf where you saw that where the kids were playing, we already made a concrete base to finally lay out that uh, astroturf. So the dream was a little closer, um, but uh, the local partner registered the land in his name and we had to file a big case uh, against him. And uh, the result was that he was threatening all the children and um, was beating them up in school, uh, whoever came for practice. So out of 80 children who were daily there for practice, uh, who played for the district, who played for the state, uh, nobody was allowed to come anymore. Um, we didn't get any support from the parents and um, we were raising the question that uh, you know we can only work and continue if you stand by our side and if you understand what this project is all about and only one family was standing up and they were even from the neighboring village uh, so we decided to uh, leave this place we got threatened for our lives and uh, there was no way to continue so we got an offer from Kurk, where there is uh, obviously more awareness about sports. Um, and we thought that maybe we have a better start there. Uh, it was a big decision to you know, get all the energy again together and all the motivation and overcome uh, the bad experience and struggle and loss uh, that we were facing in Rajasthan and start again. 
But we said, okay, we do it for the children. And uh, we packed a truck with all our belongings, mainly hockey equipment and school equipment. And we have uh, two Labradors. And uh, so my husband and I and the two Labradors were in the truck and for 70 hours and 2,400 kilometers, we were driving from Jetwara in Rajasthan to Kurk to set up a new hockey village. And uh, since three months, we are working with a local primary school, grade one to seven. We coach them in hockey and uh, we teach English and math for grade one, two, and three. They're all children from the labor, for the, from the coffee plantation labors. And uh, we hope that we can make a difference there again. I still believe that we made a difference in Rajasthan. We left our footsteps behind and um, we took three of the children with us, mm -hmm. uh, age 15, 16, and 17. Shivani got selected as the first and only girl from Rajasthan for the National Academy. And she is playing at the moment uh, senior nationals at the age of 15 for Rajasthan. And I hope she has a bright future. And um, uh, Rohit is from Goa. He lived with me the last three years in uh, Rajasthan. And I took him now to Kurk. He has a learning disability. He's a, um, suffering from legasthenic, so he can't properly read and write. But he's a brilliant sports person, a brilliant, excellent cook. And uh, he's uh, repairing each and everything. He's making bamboo rafts. And he's the king of the jungle in Kurk. And uh, Deepak, uh, he's 17. He's also a very good uh, hockey player. And he became our plumber and electrician because we live so far away in the jungle that even if you call an electrician or a plumber, it takes 10 days until somebody comes. So he's keeping our activities alive by making <coughs> jugad here and there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we, we brought these three kids uh, from Rajasthan. So this is what we could take with us. And still, kids are calling us and asking us, like, when do you come back? Or uh, do you open a new school? We want to come to your school. So at least for the children, I think we made a difference. And uh, we uh, want to continue the same thing in Cook. So that is Shivani. She came as the first girl to Germany two years back. And uh, she played an excellent uh, season for uh, one of the best clubs in Germany. And um, so now we are thinking if we again bring her to Germany, but we don't want to miss out any trial for her because uh, you never know when any selector is uh, spotting her and inviting her because last year the trial for the National Academy, she didn't manage to uh, get a space uh, because of all the struggles that we had in Rajasthan. She didn't practice for some time. But now in Kurg, we trained her well and uh, she's fit and uh, we hope that she has a bright future and will one day play for India. So she was very easy going. The f coming from a village the first day uh, in Germany, she was wearing the hot pants of her uh, German sister. She was completely adapting to the German lifestyle, which is very surprising. But I think that gives her a really bright future because she's very open-minded. Her English is pretty good. She's uh, doing now uh, NOS, means open schooling. We teach her at home. And she's doing that in English. All subjects she's doing, she's doing bio and chemistry in English. And this is Brajesh. He was three times in Germany. And uh, he got a, a job with the Tyson Krupp uh, elevators in Jaipur. Even if he only has a Hindi medium 12th grade uh, pass, but he was so motivated. And Tyson Krupp said, OK, he's so brilliant, we, we take him. Unfortunately, his parents thought more of a government job, and uh, they didn't allow him to take the job. Um, well, let's see. Maybe he will fight his way through. Uh, but he is a very, very bright and brilliant uh, child, and he will make his way, I'm sure. Yeah, so there will be a day in your life when you look back and what you did in your life, and did it make sense? Did it make any impact? Did you make a difference? And um, that was actually my motivation to 
start this project and to go ahead and ahead and ahead because I think I cannot forgive myself if I stop because I think I can still motivate and encourage so many more children. Thank you.